Yo, it's Joe, and welcome to another video. We're going to be reacting to episode 2 of Campaign 2. It's called A Show of Scrutiny. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for everybody giving me pointers, giving me breakdowns of how things work and certain rules for certain questions that I have. Great community, honestly. At least the people that watch my stuff out of the community, because I know every community has their people, but you guys are pretty cool. I'm ready. <laughs> so let's do it. And welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role. Yay! Where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Dungeons and Dragons! Before that, we also do that, I guess. Uh, it's the same embarrassment you feel about us. The way we're Ooh, right. I like Liam's shirt. I don't know what that is, but that is cool. The fuck was that? <laughs> That's, what do you mean? That's his happy sound. Oh my god. Welcome! <laughs> Uh, we're already loopy. What could possibly go wrong? So yes, welcome. <laughs> Uh, before we jump into tonight's game, we have some announcements to get through real fast, so hold tight for just a moment. Uh, first and foremost, uh, continuing uh, tonight's sponsorship with our friends at D&D &D Beyond. Uh, Ooh, D &D Beyond. Our, our, our now uh, long-term partner, super excited to be working with them uh, uh, for the foreseeable future for the time being with the show. Uh, Sam, you have some words, I believe. To plug our good f friends at D&D &D Beyond, I need my fellow castmates to help me. Can we practice? Can you all say, boo? Boo! boo. Can you all say, yay? Yeah! Okay. Yeah. The official digital tool set for Critical Role is D&D Beyond. Yeah! yeah! A great service to organize everything D&D, rules, spells, character sheets, and more, all with a pesky pen and paper. Oh. <laughs> no, you can access it digitally on your computer, <laughs> mobile, or tablet. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> the cast is using D&D Beyond every week, except for Taliesin. Ooh. Just kidding, he is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yo, poor Talison, bro. Talison's like, why? <laughs> what did I do? Every week, except for Talison. Just kidding, he is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I have to use both the boo and the yay, or else it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I like uh, I like Taliesin's hair, by the way. That's a cool blue. <laughs> he can do cool stuff like activate critical role content in his character builder and create a blood hunter. Yeah. yeah. And do you think they charge an arm and a leg? No. No. <laughs> no, they don't. No. Yeah. D and D Beyond is offering a discount of ten dollars off any digital book in their shop. Use code Beginnings. At checkout. Yay. Yay! So check him out at D&D &D Beyond. Is that D and D Beyond? Boo, no, yeah, no. Is that D, D and D, D Beyond? Yeah. Yay! This spot was written by <laughs> Sam Regal. Boo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That was good. That was good. Thank you so much, Sam. And thank you, uh, D&D Beyond. I've never been to Sam. That's okay. new campaign. Uh, yeah, for me. Oh. Good for you. I did. I'm a little complacent, but uh, I gave him one. Yeah, you did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, uh, let's see. Talk to Makina. Of course, our uh, after talk show about this episode will be on next Tuesday, as it is uh, every Tuesday after the show at 7 p.m. Pacific time here at Twitch and Alpha, Project Alpha, with our host. Brian W. Foster. I always burp when I say his name. I wonder what that says about him. I don't know why. Don't, don't. We, we, we take no Brian slander here. He is a good guy. He's, he, he helped to facilitate all those interviews. You ain't doing that to that man. Have to think it's that about cabbage that. smell. It's a cabbage. It's a cabbage, yeah. Uh, so check that out. Uh, merch, Laura, you got any updates? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about those posters last week. Um, so they're still in the store on pre-order. Some of them, ow, oh, shit. Some of them are getting shipped out, like now. So yeah. you should be getting them soon. Yay! Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna leave them on pre-order until Monday night. So if Boom. you're watching this on YouTube after it's been aired live, you've got until midnight to put in that order. Yay! And then they're gonna be gone. Well, we might have a small overage that's that, that, that's in the a store, but pre-order's done. <laughs> And then they'll be got. You know what I mean. And then hey, check out that other stuff like uh, shirts and hats and dice. And we should be getting some more Vax Machina D20s. I know a lot of people have been asking about them. They're going to be restocked hopefully within the next week. Um, and then more will be coming soon if those sell out. You know how it goes. Great. Some Thank Vax you uh, Let's see. Podcast. Uh, the episode one of this campaign is already up. 
Um, so for those of you following on podcast, nice. we'll have friends who've been waiting to just listen to the podcast on their commute. It is available, uh, the first episode. Uh, and exactly, and every Thursday morning, we'll have the campaign, uh, or the, the episode of the previous week available, and we'll be keeping those up consistently as the campaign progresses. Sweet. And we also have the entire story of Vox Machina currently available on podcast. So, so rad. it makes me happy. Um, so also, once again, uh, we are uh, firmly in support for our longtime charity uh, partners, uh, 826LA. Yeah, they do right. awesome work uh, teaching creative writing classes uh, for uh, children who normally wouldn't have the opportunity to get involved. Uh, and they're, they do fan, phenomenal work. I recommend you research them, and if you can, uh, either help uh, with a donation or actually you can donate your time as well to help teach and be part of the program if one's near you. So yeah. go check we it out. We were talking to one of um, the heads at A26LA um, over the break, Joel, mm -hmm. and he was saying that like they would love to do D&D, &D, but no one on their staff knows how to DM or do D&D. &D. And so like, if there's an A26 mm. in your area and you're like, I know, I'll start a D&D &D club. I'm sure they'll be open to it. Just go talk to them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, go teach kids D&D. &D. Hey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Run a game for a bunch of cool teenagers and show them how awesome this yeah. game is. Or mm. cool eight-year-olds who are equally as amazing. Exactly. Or dorky eight-year-olds <laughs> or teenagers. Those are the same? That's kind of <laughs> same thing. Same thing. Nerd is chic now, man. <laughs> I like to think I was always cool. <laughs> no, it's not true at all. Uh, oh no, <laughs> I'm still. We're trying to get there. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, let's see. Appearances. Uh, Lauren Travis will be at Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle, March second to the fourth. So, up in that area, go over and say hi to them. Uh, I will be at Lexington Comic and Toy Con in Lexington, Kentucky, March 9th to the eleventh. Kentucky. Uh, as well as uh, Oda Fest in Calgary, up in Canada, uh, May 18th to the twentieth, and Acon in Texas, June seventh to the tenth. Um, Calgary is like the Kentucky of Canada, so you're... Hey, I've heard that. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll like, take that as a compliment. They have rodeos. Yeah. Yeah. I am it's also true. going to back anime, Ooh, not to be Bakersfield? confused with sack anime, on February 3rd and 4th. Wow. How do you feel that? That's cute. B-A-K, that's real soon, so I'll be there. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. And I believe. Wait. You know, have any of you guys uh, met these guys in real life? Or like went to a con, not even like like one to one, but like have you seen them at a con or at a panel or something like that? Seems to me that that would be a fun time because these guys are pretty pretty funny. Got that good energy. So um, if you did see them, how was their panel? Or if you got a picture with them or something like, how was it? I mean, they're all people at the end of the day, like you and me, but. Yeah, yeah. Just I'm just curious. I've never been to a con. I would love to go to one, um, especially like a comic con or something like that, or like an anime expo or something like that. But um, yeah. Oh wait. What? Comic book next week. Oh, oh right, that was yours. Yeah. Issue four. I bet. Comic book. <laughs> issue four. Issue four. Issue four on the twenty fourth, I believe it is. Yes. Right? By, by far, it's the, the most fourth of all of these books. It's easily the, the most fourth. I'd agree with you on that, actually. Oh. That's true. Thank you. Oh, this is yeah. new. This is just, 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 just went for this. It's going to slowly darken over time. I want it's going to be kind of dark. Into pure shadow. Oh. <laughs> it's it's gonna be it's gonna be it, it's gonna be key uh, no, keyframed and like and like photoshopped. I'm aware. Like this is like what I was. Doing. Oh please, the imitation oh. is there, folks. Screen cap and Photoshop away. Screen yeah, it's, yeah. I've, I've already been told that it's gonna happen. Pro ah. They're like, we're already on it. Yeah, I love it. All right, cool. That's awesome. On that note, that concludes our announcements. Thank you for your patience. Mm. Ah. And I believe it's time for us to begin tonight's episode of Critical Role. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the intro. ago because look at how much Talison's hair has grown from this filming until like now so it's been it's been a few months absolutely it's probably been like damn near half a year <laughs> again I'm trying to I feel like are they just kind of like personifying how they were as kids or like what are we doing or is this just the vibe of the intro? You know, 
I, I, I went at Sam. My boy Liam, do you see Liam's fit right there, bro? He's got the turtleneck with a scarf. Sheesh. He's in the It, it, of course, they'd be the ones, the two, to have the most, like, out there ones. <laughs> and welcome back. <laughs> so, last we left off, our slowly gathering band of adventurers had begun to have their stories intertwined in the city of Trostenwald, on the southern reaches of Western White Andir, on the continent of Wildnote. Here we had Nott and Caleb, who had been traveling southward, coming and meeting in the center of the tavern of the Nestled Nook Inn with Jester, Beauregard, and Ford, upon which they were invited to a nearby carnival that had begun preparing for the performances later that evening, in which they met Yasha and Molly. Um, after swapping some stories, earning and losing some gold, uh, they began to gather on the outskirts of the Ustalak, the lake right on the eastern edge of Trostenwald for the first opening performance of the Fledgling and Moondrop Curi Carnival of Curiosities. Traveling Carnival. Traveling Carnival of Curiosities. Um, upon entering the tent, uh, they saw a number of performances. <laughs> However, during uh, a musical performance by this, uh, this young dwarven girl, whose voice was this mysterious, magically enchanting experience, uh, a member of the audience rose up and began to transform into a terrible, f sort of undead creature that began to just lash out, killing another member of the audience, who then began to become one of these same creatures. You all, grabbing your weapons from Yasha, who had been keeping them stashed away, leapt into the fray, slaughtered both of these terrible beasts, just in time for the Crown's Guard to rush in and ask you what the hell happened. After information had been gathered of who was immediately available and responsible for this carnival, Gustav, uh, Bo the Breaker, and Molly were marked to be arrested. Uh, one of the guards was escorted outside of the tent by Yasha, who was going to show him uh, where this young dwarven girl was currently resting, and upon being led astray to the wrong tent, she just ran into the distant hills and vanished. Um, and that is where we left off. Bro, what a summary. That was so succinct, but every, every detail was important, but there was no fluff. He told you everything you needed to know perfectly, no extra words, it wasn't too wordy, that's, psh, this guy is mint. So. So we're still at the carnival. You're still in, still the, tent. in the tent. With Crown Scott. Uh, with, with, with the Crown Scott and with Watchmaster Ajassid. Ajassid. <clears throat> at which point, the Crown's Guard that had left, not but a moment before, comes rushing in, his breath Huffing, sweat dripping from his brow, his eyes kind of wild. He goes, ah, "Watchmaster, she, the, the woman, the, the, the big woman, she, she's gone. She's." At which point, the watchmaster turns. Yeah, she put the jets on. You're a freak. <laughs> she put the Crocs in sports mode and dipped. <laughs> Go with him. Search for her. They all immediately run out, back the uh, the exit performers flap, and he turns to the rest of you in the group. Shackle and drag those three down to the stockade. <clears throat> about five guards approach and begin to press Gustav, Bo, and Molly to the ground and begin to put chains and shackles on them. I'd like to make a counteroffer. <laughs> He's like in, in mid-speech as he says, <laughs> The rest of you, keep an eye on the performers here. Ask around, see what you can find. As for the others, don't go far. The innocent patrons, you mean? You may be innocent, in which case you have nothing to worry about. However, we have an investigation to complete. So, I would ask that you stay within the city and wait until you're called in. You will be questioned, and when this investigation is completed, regardless of how long it may take, you are not to leave Trostenwald. 
If I could just uh, contribute one word. Um, the 40 or so people who are outside and the rest of us will vouch for this one, the colorful one. He saved uh, many people's lives. Don't take my word for it. There's, there's everyone outside. Mm. Kind of all the rest of the Crown's guard glance at each other. He goes, well, unfortunately, that is not for me to decide. Mm, the lawmaster damn. would have to be appealed to. If you wish to come with us, we can bring you along with us to the stockade and you could speak with her. Then perhaps she may grant you leniency, but I can give you no guarantee. Uh, why don't you just question us right now? I'm confused on why you don't, you know, just do that now. Well, we could do that instead. We'll have you arrested, put you in the stockade as we question the rest of you. To the stockade. Yeah, we'll do it one place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, jails are not my favorite terrain. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to point that out. <clears throat> not this go round. No. Nice. Good to know. I would have guessed that. No about you. jails. <laughs> mm, don't. Not really comfortable with that. So, we're leaving. The rest of you, stay in here. Watch over the performers. Make sure nobody leaves. Come if you wish, otherwise we'll be in touch. And the, uh, the Watchmaster gathers alongside the other five Crown's Guard, lifting up the shackles of the three that have been arrested and begin to drag them outside of the tent into the night air. I sent Frumpkin to follow. Okay. Um, can I double back into the performance area and see if I can find that little girl that they're looking for before they do? Uh, you may if you want to. Uh, all right, so you send Frumpkin just to follow them. You guys are staying behind them? Are we going Are there? Are there three regular Crowns Guard that are going with Molly? Or is the Watchmaster going with them as well? The Watchmaster is going with them, or at least he's exiting the tent with them. It looks like there are five Crowns Guard attending the three of them that are shackled. I'll go out the front exit of the tent just to see if the Watchmaster goes with Molly. <coughs> okay. I'll follow four. Okay, so the two of you are following anybody with them? Curly, it's you two and Frumpkin. Frumpkin. Are we going with them or not? Should we stay here? This is not our affair, right? I don't know. I, I am having second thoughts about being here at all. Well, you sent the cutie, didn't you? Yes, and we're not going to leave without him. Um, why don't we just uh, follow behind a bit? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so as you guys exit and kind of keep a pace behind <clears throat> watching the Crown's Guard guiding the uh, the current uh, prisoners towards the actual city, um, Frumpkin keeping kind of a zigzagging distance behind and following. Uh, DM, yes. is it possible for me, if not is holding my hand and leading me to go full third eye and uh, walk <coughs> blind and deaf here, looking through Frumpkin's senses? I, I would say yes, but you are purely like Mm. All you're doing is walking forward, and you need someone to guide you. Right, that's fine. You can't communicate to me either, so. Well, no, I you, can he talk. can't hear you, we he can't yeah. see you. But I can't hear you. Do I can talk, shit. and I can hold her hand so she can stop me from platforming. Yes, yeah. but you can talk? <laughs> sure. He okay. can talk, but he can't but hear I can't, you. I can't got hear it. Fucking Brandon. Okay, great. great. But we've done this before, so you know yes. to squeeze my hand really hard <clears throat> if I should pipe down. Sure. <laughs> All right. So, first off, Oh, That's regard. interesting. Yeah. As you back out of the performer's exit of the yeah. tent into the center of their encampment, the immediate exit, um, there are already four crowns guard that are currently searching around and kind of setting up a watch perimeter around the different tents. They're gathering and making sure that none of the other performers have fled, and a lot of them are being kind of brought out into an area where there's a number of tents all facing towards a large campfire in the center. There's a couple of chairs set up there. It's kind of the common area for the performers of the carnival. Um, and it looks like they're all just kind of being put out there so they can get a beat on it and make sure they know where everyone else is. Um, I'm going to try and like be aloof, kind of stealth a little bit. I don't want to make myself completely known. Are you trying to like stealth out of sight or just trying to not draw attention? No, just trying not to draw attention. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead and make a stealth check just to see if. <laughs> Wait, did we the just all ditch Marisha? Yeah. She just she walked out. Yeah, she did. That's what I was thinking. Better. That's better. <laughs> uh, uh, 17. 17, okay. Uh, as you kind of dart through the flap of the tent and move behind one of the large um, carts 
that currently is still affixed to a horse that is currently just chewing on an apple, and you hear the crunch in its teeth. You glance over past the edge of the immediate near tent, and you can see this group gathering there, and it appears that no one's immediately aware of your presence. Do I see the little girl whose name was, what was her name? Toya. 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 Um, you do not see her yet. Like the, the guard just got out there, and they're just beginning to pull people out. You do see um, uh, the, the fire dancer brought out there. You then you then see the two uh, the yeah or not the the, the the knot sisters are brought out and kind of pushed out there and you see they're all kind of are people being frustrated. Amicable? Yeah, they're just they're, they're not like shoving them around, but they're just calling them out to the front so they know where they are. Okay, I want to like look around. Do I see any type of like movement in the shadows? Anyone looking suspicious? Make perception check. All right, all right. Let's see. Let's see if this. If this is uh, correct, a perception check would have to do with the wisdom, I think. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, natural 18, 21. 21. Natural 18. Okay, as you glance okay. about, you don't see anything lurking in the shadows. What you do uh, notice, though, one, three. I think so. I think so. Is <laughs> I was just trying to do the math in my head. Out of one of the uh, the the tenants on the southern side. And as he brings her out, there's a heavy thud sound. And you see coming up from behind the tent, the large form of, uh, you heard the name Kauri once, but the, the devil toad, the, the, the obese lizard man who's kind of Kauri, like right? stomping up behind. Is he like Ka a dude Kauri. or is he like a creature? Uh, it's, yes. it, it looks like a lizard, a lizard folk, lizard man, so like scaled, humanoid, mm -hmm. but extremely like thick, kind of uh, bulbous belly, large almost frog-like legs. Okay. Hmm? Bipedal or on all but, fours? Uh, due to, due, due to the, the, the size of his form, mostly all fours and kind of lumbering forward on all of them, but That's sits big back boy. on kind of a bipedal situation. So they're bringing the both of them out? Uh, well, the, the, uh, the toad is kind of hiding behind the tent, and as soon as Toya comes out, comes up to the guard and kind of puffs up its chest. And <laughs> the guard spins around and kind of goes for the blade and kind of pulls it out just carefully. Am I still next to that horse? Hmm? Am I still you are, next yes. to the horse? The horse, is, the horse is currently still uh, up on the cart, but is is about maybe three feet from you. Um, Beast shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> take my staff and just give a really nice whack to the horse to get it to run. Mm. You know what? Let's go ahead and make uh, make an animal handling check on we that. We never get to make those. <laughs> wow, bro, talk about wow, talk about uh, talk about your list coming in handy, bro. <laughs> Holy shit, because I would have never known what an animal handling thing was. I mean, it's self-explanatory, but yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and animal handling has to do with wisdom, if I remember correctly. First of the show. Was my animal handling survival. Oh my god, I'm so nervous right now. You're good, you're good, you're good. That's not great. Eleven? Eleven's fine, eleven will do it. It wasn't okay. a hard DC, but it was more knowing where to hit it to where it would cause it to bolt versus just get angry. Get pissed. Sure, um, kick me. So, um, going for a, you know, not not to actually like hurt the creature, but no, just enough to spook it. Whip. You hit it a right place towards the back of its, of, of its, of its hind quarters to cause it to suddenly rear up. And go into a sprint. The cart <laughs> begins to just like bounce and smash onto the ground. You can see the wheels kind of clattering into the rock. Don't laugh at his horse sound. That was amazing, guys. At its hind quarters to cause it to suddenly rear up <laughs> and go into a sprint. The cart <laughs> begins to just like bounce and smash onto the ground. You can see the wheels kind of clattering into the rocks and the the stone between I'm the bits of. In the opposite direction and try and loop around to the south side. Make a stealth check, please. Big dice, big dice. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, the the 19. Okay. Um, 
You dart around the uh, the north side of these tents, and you're pretty sure you weren't seen, as far as you know. But as the as the cart begins to, to bolt off behind this horse, you see all the crowd's guard turn. The one that was currently staring at the Devil Toad kind of glances off to the side. As he glances off, the Devil Toad kind of takes Toya and just pulls her to him protectively. And uh, and the guard kind of puts his sword away and <coughs> check, points at them, and then bolts off uh, to go after the horse. The other three stay, kind of watching over the group. Okay, can I loop around and kind of come up behind them? I mean, they're, they're, the, they're scattered a bit, but there's... The Devil Toad and Toya. Oh, yeah. Uh, make another stealth check. You're, you're, you're running through open areas each yep, time yep, you yep, do yep, this. Yep, 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 yep. Oh boy. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, wow, I watched that happen. Four, ten. That is, that's oh. a monster die right there. That that's the tease. You, Laura, put him in the dice jail. <laughs> okay. I don't as have you, my dice jail out yet. It's okay. Hope as you that. come up around the back <laughs> of the Devil Toad, uh, the guard that runs past <laughs> doesn't immediately notice you because he's focused on where this card is running off and. Uh, you can see another guard that was far away from this encampment that's circling back with him. The two of them are now bolting in the direction as the car begins to slow. It's not just going for it forever, but it, you know, it's spooked and it's starting to slow down. They're just going to inspect it. Um, however, as you kind of slink up behind, the Devil Toad's head kind of like curls back towards you and you hear this deep guttural. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. Toya? I'm look at Toya. Hey, come on, let's, let's get out of here. Let's go. Uh, at which point a voice says, um, excuse me? <laughs> oh, and you can no. see, like, the three guards are there just staring at you. Fuck, you didn't say there were fucking guards. I didn't say there were three guards. There were the three guards watching them. I thought that they said they got left. One well, left. one of them left. <laughs> one of them left. Yeah. <laughs> so wait. Oh, shit. That's, that's bad like stealth check, I'm sorry. But, but there's now three three count crowns guard out there, and they're like, can I help you? <laughs> Time to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You oh, going to jail so now? Exciting. Kill them all! Hey! <laughs> uh, I was actually just uh, looking for the Lou. The the guard is closest to you. Kind of glances at the other guys and goes. So she was she was with the group, right? They recognize you, and they kind of look at each other. You're going to the stockade. Right? No. Oh. <laughs> And the, the three guards slowly approach, and uh, they, they begin to take out chains and manacle you up. In an effort not to go to jail, you, you went to, you went to jail. jail. <laughs> Trying to free the damn girl. Hey, man, you missed 100% of the shots you don't take. I, I, I get it. I know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so you're, so you're, so you're shackled and you're going to be dragged towards the stockade. Uh, are the guy, are the two guards like? It's just the two guards, right? It's the two guards now. Um, as you're being brought back, you can see more guards are coming from the city to the, to the carnival. Like they're keeping it under surveillance. So are they taking me away? They're well, taking you to the city, yeah. What are they doing with Toya? Anything? Are they leaving them behind? They're leaving them behind currently with the guards that are there. Like, like they're they're not arresting anybody from the carnival, but they're not letting them leave. Like they're keeping him there. Um. Okay. I'm gonna just do a quick. Kill them all. <laughs> I'm in the. I'm in shackles. You are. Okay. I'm gonna do some monk shit here. I'm gonna elbow one of the guards. Oh. This is right in the ribs. Oh no! You're, and take you're the other the one and bash the other one in the face. And then I'm gonna turn to Toya and I'm gonna say, "Run, run, go, run." Okay, um, go ahead and... <laughs> that's all kinds of roles. Yeah, that's First, go ahead and make an athletics Let's, check. Yeah, mm -hmm. athletics. I can't watch. To, to, this is a terrible to, idea. To, to see if, I you, like if you... To yeah. not drag any attention towards her, you are completely do, do the shoving time, her into I mean, the limelight. I'm trying to just to I'm distract so excited. these fucking assholes. That's a six. <laughs> I'm so excited Ten. about this. So, no. yeah, yeah. so yeah. as you Welcome go back to elbow, you get halfway there before your chains go Yo. taut, and you—they're both kind of holding the chain at each side, and you can see the tension of it. You can't even get him from behind. So, you're like, before you're halfway, you you imagine it in your head. A quick question: So, for any of you guys that have DM, right, from like a DM's perspective, you know, so she just brought this scenario to him of what she wanted to do. Matt very quickly was able to okay. Since you rolled a ten, it wasn't a it wasn't a good roll. 
your chain gets tucked. Like when they bring these things up, right after he tells them what to roll for, is he thinking, okay, what am I going to have them do if this goes right? Or what am I going to have them do if this goes wrong? And then he comes up with his ideas like in a matter of like a couple seconds. Is that like how, like as a DM, is that what you do? Or you just kind of just go with the flow? Is it not that deep? <laughs> And you go over it two or three times. As you go through it, the first step <clears throat> doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> Tried to do the Sherlock Holmes pre fight. Right. Yep. <laughs> what, what, is it, what does it say? Uh, this this mustn't uh, something on an emotional level. Step one. Da 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 da. And he just. Oh, yeah. so, yeah. Do I at least get the run out to Doyle? No. Mm. You just, she just stand in there, you get like, got, Bo. waiting for another no, guard? No, no, no. You're done. She's actually having a seizure in the yeah. chain. <laughs> <laughs> She's... <laughs> like, what is... Yo, Bo is not having a good time at this carnival, I'll tell you what. I mean, it started off cool. She was being carried around places. Sweet, right? She killed a monster. Sure, she was loving that. Right now, it's 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 just it went all downhill from there. What are you doing? No. Is she running? No, she's she. Honestly, like the devil toad and her like seem pretty close. Like he's grabbing her in a protective manner, and no, she's. No, they can both her. run. They're right. Run for your life. Fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to get arrested. Sorry. Point. Two two Retro bad rolls in a row. Oh, no. uh, oh baby. Um, level two, man. I know level two. Seriously. All right. Seriously. So I go join my friends. No, you will shortly. <laughs> Ahead of her, uh, <laughs> um, along the way, Gustav is just quiet. Uh, Bo the Breaker, Bosun, as you know, my full name, um, is kind of grumbling under his breath and just kind of trying to out loud piece together thoughts on what may have transpired, saying things like, you know, I don't know, I have to. You think it's, you think it's, it's done on the inside, or is this somebody trying to sabotage it? I don't know. I think maybe it has nothing to do with us. I think maybe we were just caught in a crossfire. It's probably possible. <sighs> Sorry, sir. Yeah. I'll try and get my mouth shut. It's, yeah, and at which point one of the guards kind of tugs a little bit and boots <clears> your <throat> chain and says, Quiet now. Save it for the lawmaster. They bring you in towards the. Um, you go in through the, the locks ward into the hills ward, which is the southern portion of Trostenwald. And you are brought to the outside of the stockade, which is a large, uh, single story, though tall. A rectangular building of large stones and masonry. It's it's built for uh, function. It's not a very beautiful building, but it's it's defensible, uh, and it seems fairly well made. Uh, however, there are the banners of the Crown's Guard marking the Devil Door entrance. And as you brought within, uh, you can already see there's two central chairs where two current <coughs> watch sit, just watching the the front gates or the front door. Uh, beyond the right, you see is an office that you guys are dragged to, and the rest of you eventually catch up to the group and you're all brought inside this kind of darkened office. Um, inside, relatively simple. Uh, this isn't you know, a library-type study office. This is very much for function. Uh, there's a couple of small crates that contain materials that are kind of in too far in shadow to see the details of it. Look to be pieces of paper, probably gathered evidence, or weapons that have been reclaimed. Um, there is a stone desk on the far end, and there you can see um, within this office, uh, already accompanied by a messenger dressed for immediate travel, is a tough-looking dwarven woman in her middle years, uh, rapidly scrawling on parchment. You can see her black hair is streaked with silver, uh, kind of tumbling past her red and gray leather armor. Uh, she finishes writing on this parchment, rolls it up, and hands it to the messenger, who immediately darts out of the room without a word, past you guy, kind of giving you a brief look as he continues on whatever his business is. As soon as your eyes kind of pass off the messenger, you hear a loud slam, and you glance back, and you can see that she's kind of put her hands on the table, and she glances up. All right, what sort of riffraff have you brought in to me this day? At which point, um, the watchmaster kind of takes the chains of the three of you, and kind of pulls you towards the front of the group, and says, oh, I'm sorry to be a bother, but we have three individuals arrested in connection with the, as you've heard so far, deaths at the carnival performance this evening. She kind of rolls her eyes. Oh, all right. Bring them forward. They go ahead and pull the chains up. The watchmaster and bows his head and then leaves the room and leaves it. She steps forward and goes, I am Norda, and it's my job to keep this city safe and to keep shite like what happened tonight from happening. I approved your second time 
on the outskirts of our town, and you've killed two of my people. Mm. So, what have you say about yourselves? Oh. Exactly how did we kill them exactly? <laughs> she glances over at you, glances over at uh, Gustav. I've been told by my guard that you uh, give a performance, and as part of this performance, you released two beasts into the midst of the population. Well, technically, he wasn't part of the performance. Technically, he was saving everyone. Technically. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Uh, well, you see, we actually had nothing to do. Gustav interrupts you and says, I'm so sorry, my liege. Uh, please, I take full responsibility for what happened this evening on myself. These people around me had nothing to do with this. They are not part of the carnival. They were just merely helping. Uh, it is my carnival, and uh, whatever judgment there lies, I take upon myself in my head. At which point, Bo, the half orc, steps forward, kind of against his chains, and goes, Gustav, what are you doing? He's like, shut up. Please, whatever judgment there is, put it upon me. And he bows his head low. Is that the case? See the only one? She takes a good, hard look at you and Bo the Breaker. Or you're waiting for me to speak. Yes, he's the only one. <laughs> oh. Paper's waiting check. Deception check? Is that what that was? persuasion check. Oh, persuasion. Natural 20. Oh. Nice. <laughs> wow. A fucking time, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> she gives you a look, looks over at Bo the Breaker, kind of shakes her head. Keep these two downstairs. This one let go. He seems to be free. Ooh. We'll be talking to you very soon. At which point the crown's guard drag the chains back and Gustav gives you a quick look under his eye and goes, as they're pulled out of the room, out of sight. She glances to you. Well, you don't have to chains, that's great. Doesn't mean you're absolved of the investigation. Uh-oh. So, where are you staying? You and your compatriots. Oh, well, technically, we just all met, technically. Technically. Well, technically, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you're all together as part of this investigation. We're a group, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to have our investigators come to wherever you're staying, which, uh, and she looks at some papers here, looks to be the uh, Nestle Nook. That's correct. All right. Don't leave the city. We'll be in touch. Great, I really like it here, so that's good that we get to stay so long. Do you have something to say? No, uh, just shocked to have seen someone die in front of me, not, uh, not more than just a month ago. I can assure you, we're here to cause no trouble. We will be as compliant as we possibly can be. Good. Dismissed. She slaps the edge of the table. Uh, the uh, remaining uh, crowns guard, who just kind of left there to keep a watch, escorts you out of the stockade, escorts you under the street. Her accent is really, really strong. It's hard to not match her accent. So one accent I really have trouble with. Would you call it infectious? Sorry. The one, the one that we know is a problem. Um, I'm going to call my uh, cat back to me and I drop uh, the telepathy and I just start tugging uh, you back to uh, the nestled nook. Come on, we have to talk about this. We have to decide what we're going to do. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, we're not, not here. Oh, no, no, I thought you were behind us. My cat was in there. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, you had to stay within 100 feet mm -hmm. to maintain that. Well, we would have walked up to the building. That's a good right. cat would have scurried around if yeah. possible. So. So I'd like to think that I heard all that, which is why I just. You did hear all that, yeah. Together. Okay, and I'd say as they're making their way out, yeah, you could probably duck around without them seeing you as they. Fast walk back to yeah, you could do that. Okay. So, you guys are jettisoned into the street. It's now probably just past midnight. Oof. Molly Mark, I don't mean to pry into your business, but has this ever happened to you before? This, this has never, anything like this has ever happened before. And, and thank you. For the record, I don't owe you, uh, any of you anything. Oh, 
I don't know about that. I swear, but thank you. <laughs> and uh, I'm ready to help with this. Do you think it was the little girl? No, no, that's 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 an act. That's not that's not anything. It's just a show. Right, the large mm. the large toad that was with the girl. What's the story there? It's nothing special. It's just it's just a guy making a buck. All right, he's 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 fine. He's this fine. Point, you hear the footfalls of guards approach and a rattle of chains as you see. By Bo the way, where's the obnoxious one? The, the, <laughs> that really before. loud. That I suppose the rest of you who are like gingerly brought up. You see, you see Beauregard <laughs> being pulled forward, but now the chains around her are being pulled taut on two sides. She's being brought forward like a wild animal. Oh almost. man! And she's just being led towards the stockade. <laughs> I mean, she did just try to take them both out, so I understand. Help! 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. Help! Help! Oh, I thought you didn't like jails. <laughs> This is part of the show, by the way. I was just curious. <laughs> no. <laughs> the last thing you see is she's yanked into the stockade and out of sight. I wouldn't be very helpful and not go in there with the two of you while you try and get her out. So should we go in and try to get well, her out? Yeah. Too? Okay, 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 okay. I'll stand guard. Okay. No. We'll follow her in. Leave. I have nowhere to go. All right. You guys walk in behind her. You watch her being pulled uh, to the stairs. She's not. She's being. She's bypassing the office of the lawmaster right now, and is being brought, is seemingly to incarceration before being questioned. Um, they bring her to the stairs, and what looks to be a torch-lit subterranean basement area. Um, and as you begin to approach and follow behind, uh, you can see one of the guards who's currently on watch, who sees you guys just exit and then walk back in, and following another prisoner, kind of stands up and goes. I'm sorry, uh, where are you going? It was a busy day for us. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're partially responsible for this one as well. Uh-oh. Bad luck. He was also helping to save a lot of people. Big misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> well, see her in her cell and please exit the vicinity. Fair enough. I just realized, I'm like, yo, something is off with this group this episode. What is it? I just realized Ashley's not there. Appreciate that. <laughs> and he kind of like follows behind. I'm like, yo, where the hell is Yasha at? Well, Yasha can't be there if Ashley's not there. Well, I mean, I guess Yasha can be if Matt plays the character. but. And you guys, you know, they're, they're kind of on high alert and they're a bit scattered. You get the sense right now that they have a lot of their initial uh, stock of guards are kind of off-site right now, and so they're doing the best they can to hold on to what they currently have in the stockade. To the side, I say to Jester, I say, this does not really fall in with keeping a low profile. We talked about this. I know, this. isn't it so weird? <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it, it is, it is. Uh, you guys follow uh, down to the uh, basement portion of this, um, which there's a heavy locked door immediately uh, that is opened from the opposite side. You hear a couple of uh, keys turn and the shifting of wood against metal <laughs> before the door <laughs> opens and reveals the rest of what appears to be a long hallway that is flanked by two rows of cells, iron bars about maybe two inches apart, uh, rowing, going across the entirety of this long hallway. Um, you can't quite see the end of it until you step down to where the door frame is, and there's probably a total of ten cells to each side. Um, as you kind of walk through, um, you can see in kind of the off shadows in the corners a few kind of huddled bodies, hunched or asleep, uh, kind of keeping to the shadows and out of the light. Uh, the smell of, kind of mildewed, wet uh, compost and piss hits your nose nice. like a wall. It smells Oof. like Caleb down here. <laughs> Dang, it shuts fire, <laughs> uh, You get about five cells in where you can see the people that were previously in there, had, or the, the guard that were previously in there, just finished closing off the cell that contains uh, both Gustav and uh, Bo the Breaker. And they move to the cell just beyond that, uh, open that cell, and then go ahead and put uh, Beauregard into that one. Well, they're not going to take her to see the lawmaker. I know, why, why, why doesn't she get to talk to the lawmaster? As he closes yeah, it and locks it? to talk to the lawmaster. Because she decided not to come, helpfully. What do you mean? Uh, oh, no, you misunderstood. See, that was just, I have this, like, spasm that kind of has this, like, 
kind of twitch, you know? It's just, it's it was an injury from a, like a childhood thing. <laughs> are, um, are we, oh no, are you guys making fun of her because of her spasm? Yeah, that, that's actually, it's, <laughs> it was very sensitive for me. I had a really tr- the tough th- childhood. The th- and I was just trying to find a bathroom. <laughs> The three guard walk away, not caring. Um, <laughs> who were there previously? And, uh, at the, at <laughs> Those guards need to be canceled. <laughs> uh, I like. I really like Bo's uh, attitude and like the way that she handles things. Very like lackadaisical. Like whatever. It is what it is. Like <laughs> she, if if it is what it if it is what it is was a person. It'd be both. At this point, there, a, a man who's in the far end of the hall walks up, and you can see him. He's a uh, a man with like a, a a kind of a heavy, bushy beard that obscures a lot of what looks to be a dark leather mantle um, over general cloth tunic. But he's like he- burly arms, heavy torso, super scrawny legs, um, <laughs> kind of a widow's peak, and he looks to be the jailer. And he kind of walks up and puts his hand on the bars and goes, "Oh, well." If you want to be patient, I'm sure the lawmaster will be here sometime in the morning, and you can discuss whatever this business is. But if you want to say goodbye, now's the time. Actually, we were just upstairs, and it would really help us if we could perhaps expedite the process. Um, perhaps there's an arrangement we could come to if she could see the lawmaster now. Yeah, I'm like a kind of injured man. Like, no, like, seriously, and it could show my eight hit points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> How many kittens is that again? Uh, That's like four. Sixteen, 16 four kittens. Four kittens. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're half a hit point. I don't think kittens have more than really? kittens. That's eight front kittens. Wow. An, audience is, <laughs> an audience is all we're asking for. No favors. Yeah, this is just a mis- like a wrong time, wrong place thing. Make persuasion check. He's got some pretty Use high it. charisma, so. Uh, which is crazy, because... Looking at his, it looks like he's got higher charisma than um, than Molly. When Molly's the one who's like the showman, and not necessarily the showman, but like you know, the salesman of the of the crew, you know. Sixteen. Sixteen. It kind of gives you a look. Miss. All right, but if she gets angry, it's not on me. I understand. Thank She's you. She's a very calm person. She she very rarely. I've never seen her angry ever. <laughs> and he gives a whistle. So glad I'm not there right now. Another crown star <laughs> comes up and approaches him. And he goes like, "I'm sorry. Could you go and?" That's the lawmaster. They are requesting an audience. If she gets angry, just add it to this one sentence. And the guard exits, and a brief time by, you can hear the slight muddled cursing of a dwarven female descending the stairs. You can see she has like an overcoat on, was like halfway out of the stockades, finishing up her evening in her office. She's mad as hell. Remember your little sister. <clears throat> what is it? Stockades, finishing up her evening in her office. Bo, remember your little sister. <clears throat> So as the lawmaster approaches now, kind of pulling the coat Remember over herself, says, okay, so you've returned, apparently, needing to poke into what business now before I go off and get some food? I do hate to trouble you again twice in the same evening. It's I hate being troubled twice in the same evening. If, if we may, this sweet girl here was also part of our party, and she is quite the protective one. Um, I'm afraid that she was also providing aid to our fellows in that tent. Uh, I'm afraid her younger sister was attacked in a similar way. I, I feel it's only prudent to acknowledge that she was trying to protect this young dwarven girl that performed in the circus. She means no harm. It was an adopted sister. <laughs> I practically raised her. It's a sensitive subject. No. Oh. Okay. I would like a deception check. Twenty-four. Bo's free, Three, baby. Yeah. Modified by other answers. Um, <laughs> what? Twenty-four. Whoa! Eighteen. Yeah. Modified by other answers. Um, <laughs> I was helping. I knew it. This Don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, she gives kind of a narrow look, a narrow look through her eyes, looks to one of the other guards that you see standing in the back, familiar one to you, Bo, and goes, Is this true? She goes, uh, 
<clears throat> uh, it, it appeared to us that she was attempting to escape upon uh, us uh, trying to bring calm to a very tense situation, um, but I, I leave it in your uh, your realm, Lawmaster. She looks back. So your sister, apparently, is part of this now as well? Ad adopted sister. <laughs> okay. Well, your sister's under investigation. Sure. She's staying at the same place that we are. Indeed, mm -hmm. and we can be found at any hour. The nestled nook in is where we are. And I, I'm more than willing to be compliant with the investigation. In fact, you can see the injury of the beast left on my ribs. <laughs> and so if you want to test it, you know, for any type of uh, specimen samples, feel free. It's very painful, but I'm willing do to do it for the cause. Do, do you need me to heal that? Place? No, for the cause. Okay. Do it for the cause. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up, I'm working on something. <laughs> Yo, Jester, stop. You're messy. First, you messed up Travis's thing. Like, Which, <laughs> she looks to you now and goes, and our fuel Are you saying you might have been infected by this beast? <laughs> no. Mm. No, it's a separate. God damn, Bo. You ain't getting a break, bro. Holy shit. Issue. There was like, uh, there was two things going mm. on. There was like the, mm -mm. the big angry toad beast, and you got to swipe at me. And then there were people who were. Getting See attacked. It? And she looks over to the jailer. She goes, hey. She goes, could you have a look at this wound for me real fast? I want to make sure this isn't something that's going to spread. A yeah. great idea yeah. indeed. And uh -huh. thankfully there was no flesh to flesh contact. Nope. Yeah. The big the the big zombie beast especially was using a lot of like sticks and stuff to attack people more than any kind of mouth. <laughs> <laughs> more than any mouth. <laughs> What a way with words. <laughs> the jailer Chester has. Feeds, um, <laughs> takes a quick look at the wound and goes, no, it, it, it appears to mainly be just bludgeoning. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we'll keep a close eye on her. Uh, you can see now the, the lawmaster is kind of rubbing her eyes in frustration because I just want to sleep. Indeed. It would give us no greater pleasure than to get out of your hair. Mm -hmm. Then. We'll have guards posted at the outside of the inn. You're not to leave. Okay. Until this investigation is complete. Mm -hmm. It may mm -hmm. take days. But until we find out who's responsible for these deaths and bring them to justice, you are not to leave the tavern. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. During the day, Understood. Even? Yeah, please, Jester. Jesus Christ. Even I was like, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> Jester, I had to say something. The tavern. Understood. Like, at all during the day? Understood. Even? Just a question. If we want to ditch your shop or something. Not okay? <laughs> oh, come on, oh, man. This is done. Cool. Because otherwise, you're welcome to stay here instead. It is really beautiful here, but I think I'd rather stay at the inn. Indeed we would. This is most gracious of you, Lawmaster Norda. Get them the fuck out. And she turns around and kind of just sighs heavily as she stomps out of the chamber. <laughs> um, the jailer kind of opens the cell door and allows Beauregard back out. And he looks a bit confused, but amused at the same time. And you guys, uh, the, the guards that had originally arrested you, escort you out, not leaving any element of their sight off of you. Um, they escort you guys to the actual inn itself, to the, uh, the the bottom floor of the Nestled Nook Inn, watch you enter, and then post up right outside of the main entrance to the tavern. You should have spasmed a couple times on the way here. Oh, shit. Yeah. What happened? Opportunity missed. Yeah, my little sister, what the, what she's the a what? Dwarf. She's not, she's human. What? <laughs> No, I, I was trying to say she had a little sister that had a similar incident. A similar situation. You... She felt like she had to intervene due to being involved. I, I know what Fjord was going for. I'm I trying to you. protect her. I, oh, I was trying to throw you, you a bone. You didn't make that clear at all. It was very clear. <laughs> are you? I think, Jester, I think you're just having a rough go at it today. Is up in your room or are you yeah, in the... Yeah, we're under watch. 
I was just trying to go with what you said. Yeah. 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 You, no. did, you did all right. All right. I mean, it kind of worked. It's. I go, But you're not entirely wrong. I was trying to go get the stupid little girls who seemed to be stupid. Did you see anything? I tried to save her. I was like, go, do you get the hint? What's going on? Why would you save her? She turned those people into zombies. I. I. We don't know that. I mean, she could have. She look. I look. She I didn't. got a soft. Oh hi. Here. Yeah, if anything, we should be looking at this guy. Like, I don't, why are we, why, why are we putting our neck out from you? Like, what? Are... You're putting your neck out for Tanya for some strange reason, and I don't know why she's perfectly capable of handling herself. Have you been to this town before? Oh, not that I can remember. Oh, they all look the same after a while. Yeah, they've come through once, but that was uh, a while back, and you weren't yeah, was, really yeah, paying attention. Yeah. And you've never seen conditions like this affect Nothing any like this. other carnival goer. Hundreds, possibly thousands of shows. No, yeah, thousands of shows. Nothing. Never. It's not us. So great. We're what? stuck in a city that has zombie issues, that's Where all. Where are the other two? They, which other two? The, Girl, the stinky guy. one and the little one. <laughs> oh, your uh, friends. Yeah. <laughs> Can we look around and see if we spot Caleb and... You call them Stinky and, and the little one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. You spot around the interior of the tavern. They don't appear to be nearby. I wonder if they came back. I'll go up and ask the uh, the tavern keeper. Okay, Yorda. Yeah, Yorda. Oh, hi, hi. Uh, huh. hi. Every, everything all right? You had a few uh, bruiser types leading you in here. Some of the crowns oh guard. How does he keep track of the accents and the voices on the fly? That's crazy, dude. What? He just slips in and out of it. Like, I would have, like, it would have taken me at least, like, double that time to be like, uh, uh, shit, what, what voice is that? What accent is that? He, he just knows. Uh -huh. There was this big trouble at the carnival. Did you go? Oh, I heard about that. I didn't go in there. Bro. Somebody people come turned here saying, into a zombie I and then go, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're all under investigation because we saved them. These, these guards are weird. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, did you see the wizard guy, the stinky guy, and the little, the little, the halfling? Yeah, they came in not, not a few minutes before you did. They went upstairs. Oh, great. They're here. They are? Yeah. Good. <sighs> Meanwhile, the two of you are upstairs in your own chamber. During all of that, we were, I would have dragged you back here, brought you upstairs, so, and I whip off my ratty coat, throw it on the bed, and sit down on the ground so that I'm eye level with you, uh, not. What? Not we. <laughs> You and I have to make some decisions right now, okay? Now? <coughs> yes. Why? Well, I know why we said we were coming here. Get some booze, get some books, find a little, little taste of civilization, maybe some better food. Yeah. I, I didn't say, I also had the idea, you know, you and I meeting and, and, and teaming up has been a good thing. Oh, yes, very good. I know everyone else makes fun of your smell, but I don't smell nothing. <laughs> How That's sweet, what I like about you. <laughs> I have been thinking, and yesterday just furthers that thinking that I don't think you and I are enough, and I, w I had the idea that we would come here maybe and find others that we could tag along with, or meet up the way you and I did. But now I think that is a terrible idea. Because mm, of what happened. The people we spent the day with are lunatics. I don't think that we can do this. I've changed my mind entirely. And I think we should go, but we, we can't now because we are stuck here for the moment. under sort of holding arrest or something? We can't, we can't leave the city. No. But I was thinking about this. The people we met down down there and spent the day with, they are lunatics. But they draw a lot of attention to themselves, leaving us free to sort of mm, slink back into brain. the shadows a little bit. It might be sort of the perfect camouflage. No one's gonna be looking for a little little goblin girl anymore, because they'll be looking at the crazy people, the tieflings running around smashing shit. <laughs> You know, I had not. You know, I was rewatching a little bit of episode one today with my cousin, uh, asking him a couple of questions, as you know, as we were watching it, 
And, like, he brought up the point that, like, Sam plays this role so well. Because he's never seen Campaign 2. He got through a nice amount of Campaign 1. Um, <clears throat> and then, like, uh, yeah, so he hasn't seen this anyways, like, you know. And he's just saying, like, Sam plays this role of this little girl. This <laughs> fucking uh, rogue wants to stay in the shadows. Goblin who's a little nervous about people. But if they, if they can use the other people to their advantage, like... He does such a good job with his character. <laughs> Thought of it quite in that way, and that is a good point, but I'm... I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced, and, and perhaps we're better off. Maybe I was too ambitious. Well, let's give it a day, and maybe we can... If things seem a little bit... <clears throat> you know, skinky duty tomorrow, we can... <laughs> <laughs> we Bro, can uh, what? we can fritter away. Oh, I'm using the... that. That's going in the vocabulary. Are you kidding me, skinky duty? Hell yeah, dude. Middle of the day or something. <laughs> All right, well we'll wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> While we're here, one thing, okay? No money pot. No rat food. How are None of those places. I have silver. We don't need it right but now. But we need to replenish the healing potion you used. If we don't have that, then what happens the next time you get, you know, in trouble? The entire town. We're sealed here, and they're watching. We're with a couple of tieflings, a little person in a doll mask, and a dirty ginger. We've got people staring at us every second of the day. We need to... We need to dial it back a little bit. <laughs> She's like, hey, yo, hey, hey, yo, chill out, bro. Doll mask and a dirty ginger. We've got people <laughs> staring at us every second of the day. We need to, we need to dial it back a little bit. All right, but how on earth are we? <laughs> Is that ginger? Maybe, maybe we, all right. We can cool it with the cons for a couple of days. <laughs> but I can't promise that I won't get the itch again. Uh -oh. You just talk to me. Kleptomaniac over here. Just keep your hands full with the frumpkin, okay? Hold All my right. cat, okay? All right. And then this is going to blow over because we didn't do anything. We did something. No, good. I didn't do nothing. We just went to a show. That's right. It's a pretty good show. <laughs> Up until, you know, the, the dead dead people part. Nah, but it was a good show, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we'll lay low. Should we pretend that we're still friends with these people? I was going to suggest the same thing. In fact, I think we should go downstairs. They're going to be coming back. We don't want to cause a stir with them either. Sure. We just want to leave if that's what we're going to don't do. Don't worry. I'll turn on the charm. <laughs> nice. Thank God. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, get uh, a drink. Thank God. Head downstairs. You guys head down, you get to the bottom of the stairs just in time to see uh, Jester, Beauregard, Molly, and Ford looking across the tavern, making their way in your direction, and you guys notice them meeting you in the tavern room as well. Oh, thank God we're all here. I mean, oh, thank God you're here and and safe. All of you are here. We missed you. Where Somehow you we got go? separated, oh, friends. That happens, yes. yes. Can I inside check him? Sure. <laughs> Her. Her. Sam, natural oh, twenty. Mm. I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> Front butt, bro. What? Front butt. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it just told you. Uh, <laughs> oh. Happy. You know, you uh, you guys peace out pretty quickly. <laughs> To study uh, we me, did. Bro. I did not come to Trustwall to go to jail. Mm -hmm. What did you come to Trustwall for? Well, uh, we're tired. We've been traveling a long time. We wanted to, we've been saving. We wanted to take it easy for a few days. Sure, yeah, I'm not trying to pry. I was just curious where you were going. Yeah, I'm just curious why you have a mask. Oh, God, if I'm going to be listening to somebody's life story, I'm going to need a drink. Uh, you, gorgeous. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> you look over and see uh, um, kind of a woman with uh, darker hair who's the other general barmaid. Um, um, Adeline? Adeline. I would like a round for all of these terrible people and one for myself. And 
what's the difference between these three beers? I really, I honestly, I've got to admit, I can't actually. I don't, I, I, I don't know what they all taste the same to me. Go with the Von Brand. I don't know what they all taste the same to me. Go with the Von Brand. The Von Brand. It's got a round of Von Brandt for everybody. Actually, if it's all the same, I'm not really an ale fan. Do you have any fire whiskey? <laughs> we can get you some liquor, yeah. Could two, I have some milk? Two, please. <laughs> <gasps> it's all right. <laughs> she walks away and gets you think her. she heard that I wanted milk? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to ask for one of each of these beers because I want to have a tasting competition, and I'm not going to be drinking alone, so... I wander away from these two with their questions, and I sit down with Molly. <gasps> Caleb, you want to see something cool? Yes, I would love to see something cool. I show Caleb <laughs> where I, I etched the dick in the table a couple nights ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what the Bring fuck? Bring it back. That's pretty good. Did you etch right? a deck in the table? It's a dick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you always been an artist? I have, actually. I've been an artist since I was little. You think that's what they look like? I can tell. <laughs> That is Bro, did we all have that one friend? Maybe, okay, for the guys, because I'm pretty sure for, well, maybe for the girls, but definitely for the guys. Did we all have that one friend that just drew dicks on everything, or was that just me? Because there was this one guy that I, <laughs> I played football with him, and, res and I wrestled uh, with him. <laughs> and, bro, he, it was just, put it in his notebooks, we... Teacher would be talking about some crazy shit. He'd be drawing it during a test. If he'd finish early, he'd be drawing. Like, bro, it was nuts. It was nuts. Because I can't be the only one, right? There has to be at least some other person that's had this kind of friend. I don't know why that just reminded me of that. But it's like, bro, who does? I was like thinking, like, who does that? But then I'm like, no. People do do that because I, I know that because I had a friend who did that. So I've seen a lot of this. Okay, <laughs> that is what most of I'm them look like. Already in my cups. Sheesh. Okay, dressed are you scandalous? Okay. What? Go ahead, girl. Live your life. No. Speak your truth. <laughs> so, uh, where do you two come from? Us, us two. Like, yes, you two with the horns. Where oh, are you? I don't know where he don't comes where he, from. Do you think we all either. come from the same place? That's not what that I said. Seem... Feel free to answer separately. That is really inconsiderate. No, you are very different. That's very clear. He's purple. He's, He's like blue. Yeah. yeah. He's, Which is pretty rare. He's okay? kind of every color. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> I'm I from... Uh, I'm from... Uh, so casual. Nico... Nico Drano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember when we started the first campaign and all those places just, just came at the in a split second and we had all that history. I'll, I'll show you how you do I'm this from one. um I'm from Srevnan, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> I'm from the circus. <laughs> so you're a traveler then? Oh yeah. Quite a while. Since uh a child? Oh, oh, as long as I can reasonably remember, at the very least. Oh. It's been a while. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's nice. I like it. The good people work hard. You have a lot of scars. Yeah, that's a very funny story, actually. I like funny stories. Mm. Me too. <laughs> you did some uh, crazy shit with that sword of yours. Oh, thank you. I've actually, these swords... Oh, his abilities are so cool. Uh, well, you buy a drink and we'll see. Well, you polish off that one already? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, wow. That's Damn. a lot easier. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we get another round for the... Let me oh, rail you for the, for the first round, by the way. <laughs> well, they're keeping a tally at the table. Get Talison some more coffee. <laughs> huh? Huh? Hi. Not shoulder for the first round, by the way. Well, they're keeping a tally at the table. Franken scrapples up onto Not shoulder. Huh? Mm. <laughs> huh? Hi, hi, Frumpy. Nice to see you again. My mother always told me never give away a story for free. Wise words. Yeah. My Enjoy mother it. said don't give away other things for free. I already like your mother. <laughs> <laughs> My mother always said nothing in life is free. 
Yeah, I can tell. Uh, <laughs> None of this absolves the dodgy goblin who kind of slinked past that first question. Where, uh, where are you from? What are you traveling from? Why the mask? Only because we seem to find ourselves in quite the predicament. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, we're just a couple of friends strolling around the countryside looking for adventure. Sure. Sure you are. Do you see many goblins walking around cities here? Oh, it has nothing to do with that. I just... Uh, people moving from place to place very frequently tend to have other stories as to why they're doing it, mm, well, so I'm just curious. Let me make it clear, goblins are not typically welcome in any cities. That is why the mask. Well, you're going back to the, the goblin thing. I'm more curious about the travel thing. <laughs> the old we bow is have a string of right bad now. luck. We, we um, mm. tend to uh, get in trouble in places for various reasons, some of which is my fault. Most of which is my fault. I have sticky fingers. I can't help myself sometimes. I just, I'm fascinated by little baubles and fancy pieces of jewelry, and I love trinkets so much. <laughs> and uh, I just have to just take them and have them with me and take them and put them in my pockets. And it's got us in, in a few scrapes a couple times. And Caleb, he's fantastic, very patient with me, understands. Um, but uh, really, it's it's my fault. It's not him, you know. He he he's a smart smart man and a, a brilliant magician. Have you seen some of his his tricks? Are phenomenal, oh, really. I'd love to. I feel bad too because Yo, we never Caleb's stay in like, one place long enough for him to have. Caleb's like, bro, stop. Have a decent shower. <laughs> <laughs> that is a moving story. I uh, immediately check my pockets after <laughs> after that and see if uh, Not hand. has lifted anything. Mm -hmm. Is everything still there on my coin? Make an investigation check. Okay. I'm going to join you on this one. Snare and greed. Snare and greed at all. Six. Sixteen. Sixteen. Everything seems to be in order for all you. Right. Um. No! Wait! That was a fifteen! Right? <laughs> that was the dice I rolled. So, sixteen. Okay. <laughs> Everything seems to be in order. Okay. Okay. Anyway, that's the long and short of it. What do you do with the things once you steal them? Well, the nice ones I keep. I, I have a little... <gasps> you have a collection. I collect a lot of things, <laughs> but in the last place we hunkered down, it was all taken from me. Um, we were... We were... In, in one of those prisons before. Am I sharing too much? I'm sharing too much, no. aren't I? Yeah, bro. We were in a prison, they took all of our belongings, and I left, I lost all of my collections. <laughs> I had a lovely rock collection. Oh. I had a, a, a rare coin collection. Ooh. I had a stick collection. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's all gone now. <laughs> what about shiny things, though? I like love them. I just things. don't have any right now. Because I think if you have sticky fingers for sticks and rocks, I don't think that will get you in trouble. True, true. But they were like people's canes and things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice, bro. That's the. <laughs> I collect sticks and rocks. Oh, well, if you collect sticks and rocks, that's not so bad. <laughs> well, the sticks were like old people's canes. Canes and things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I call them sticks because I don't need them, but I suppose they, they need they really needed them. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. We only have one way to find wow. out in there. <laughs> so we. I'm sorry. I just. Yeah. I think I need clarification. Me too. If, um. Sticks mean things like valuable canes. What do rocks mean to you? You know, those rocks that humans wear on their fingers <laughs> <laughs> and yes. around their necks yeah. and stuff. Right. They're really nice rocks. <laughs> right. yep. We don't have many of those at the moment. It must be hard to get them off. Would it be fair to say the more that someone <laughs> desires wow. something, wow. the more your interest increases? Oh, I don't care about the people who have them. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just oh, like pretty things. Anything, right? <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Oh. Toys. Anything, really. Toys. I'll keep an eye out for things that you would it, like. Okay. Yeah. Can you ha help with that? I mean, I can, can if you want me to, shit? or I can point it out. That would be right. Well, really well, nice. anyway, is the, the joy in taking the things, or do you just oh, like no. gifts? No, oh, it's the collecting. <laughs> oh, so yes. it's kind of I. like a ner it's 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 like a nervous tick a little bit. And uh, are you like good a at spasm. it? Do you get caught yeah. very often? Just well, that, that would spasm. you like a demonstration? Oh, yes. Man. Uh, yes. Uh, what, now, just if I may, we are already in a little bit of a pickle. Steal something from me. Do you want me to close my eyes? Sure, that'd okay. make it really easy. <laughs> uh, are, are they closed? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> out of practice here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a shot. All right. <laughs> <sighs> Crack my knuckles. <laughs> Waste, cause uh, he'll be pissed. That's the one thing you. Said. He, he he'll be pissed. What? Yeah. He? Yeah. What's on your waist? I'm looking at her waist. What's on her <laughs> What's waist? What's on her waist? What's on your waist? My symbol to the traveler. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'll go to her left butt cheek pocket and fish around. I mean a dress. I don't have a pocket on my butt cheek. <laughs> But you can try. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what, what pockets right. do you have? Um, I would have, I guess, pockets in the front on my dress, and maybe like a little pouch on my hip. Mm -hmm. I'll do the hip pocket. All right, go ahead and make a, a sleight of hand check. Three. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you close your eyes and feel a, a tug and a shake. Oh. And a sh plus, plus eight. Oh. <laughs> What's your passive perception? <laughs> I'm gonna guess 10. No, it's uh. Well, wait, why third. the plus eight? Why the plus eight? Tell me about that. Teen. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you totally feel. <laughs> You're doing great! <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not how it usually no, works. I mean, the person isn't really question. expecting it. This is everything I was hoping it was gonna be. Oh, yeah. this is, I feel, this is embarrassing, really. <laughs> I have the one cool. skill and I failed at it. <laughs> Well, it's is... okay, you can keep practicing, okay? Do you Thank know that you. there is that one magic trick that you're able to do? Would you like to show them the magic trick you do? I pull out a small red uh, clay, uh, like a ceramic bowl, and then I pull out uh, a uh, copper piece. There, you know the trick. Oh, right? Yes, I, I know the trick. Takes a little bit of time, doesn't it? You're good. Okay. <clears throat> I do know one piece of magic. Feast your eyes. Take one step back. <laughs> <laughs> On the sacred money pot of school. Ooh. <laughs> if you place a copper piece into this pot and say the magic words, what are the magic words again? Uh, fibulous. 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 It will turn into a silver piece. Do should I say it? I want to hear you say it anyway. Only I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> For everyone has their own magic word, and it won't work with you. <clears throat> By the ancient order of the school. Fibulous! It's that as a silver coin right there. Oh. <gasps> oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Does this mean the silver I won from you was actually copper? No, it only works up. Great. <laughs> Thanks for the silver. Well, no, I, we weren't giving you the silver piece, <laughs> just showing you a, a, a bit of magic. And this pot is actually quite powerful. It can do that once a day. So if you'd like to purchase it, can you turn this into a gold piece? Ah, it only works once a day. Yeah. <laughs> well, tomorrow, can you make it gold? I think it only does the copper to silver. <laughs> 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 the magic is not that, we've talked about this, it's yes. not that strong. It's a, it's oh. a mild magic oh. pot. Oh. But if you'd like to purchase it for us, we can uh, sell How it to much? you for fi five gold. 
five gold. Five gold for one silver a day? That doesn't add up. Well, by the end of the week, you made your money back. No, well. No. Well, no. By no. the end of the... <laughs> <laughs> well, a discount for friends. Three gold. Three gold. And for that, we'll teach you your own magic word. Oh. It's pretty good. 40 days. Mm. 40 days? You do it once a day forever. You have it for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, but I have lots of money. I don't need it. But this is free money that you don't have to work for. Also, I don't know. You know. They basically helped us out today. You could do it for one for them. All right, one gold. One gold. That's a really good deal. Did you hear how much he gave me a deal? Mm. Okay. <laughs> nice. Do you give him a gold? Yes, I'll All right, give him a gold piece. Hold on, let me make sure I have it. Where's my? Uh, you go. It's the second button. Oh, on currency. The yeah. Gold. Okay. It's there. One down. Thank you. There you go. Hands. What's my magic word? Perception check. I'll do. Yeah, no. There. Okay. It's there. One down. Thank you. There you go. Hands. What's my magic word? Perception check. I'll do it. Yeah, no. Well, I'm going to let this one go. It can be whatever you want it to be. You have to agree upon it, and you have to focus on that word it's gonna uh -huh. be for one full day while you're in possession of the pot. Okay. Yes, so what you watch that like copper to be? piece become silver. How about stinky, do stinky duty? Stinky duty is, uh, that is unique. Yeah. I'm sure no one else has possession <laughs> of that arcane power word, so I, I could consider it yours if you nice. focus on it all day tomorrow. Okay. But you really have to focus. Okay, okay, I will, I will. Super a lot of focus. <laughs> Skinky duty. <laughs> Thank you for this. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Does that answer your questions? I've got some for you. That's very kind of you, that. Yeah, yeah I, uh, well, you have questions Support for me. Support the arts, yes. as it were. Okay. <laughs> How does a, uh, how does someone like you, a hu human, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you come <laughs> by learning halfling? Uh, my parents Good were question. in a, the winery business, and the wine making business, and uh, halflings really like wine. Well, every, everyone so, likes wine. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Some people more than others. Some people more than others. Some, some... The halflings just deal in wine a lot, and a lot did in the town that I'm from. And then my parents wanted me to like keep up with the books and all that stuff, so it kind of forced me to learn halfling. I was around a lot. What town was that then? It's close by here, right? Mm, it's a few. It's a, it's a bit of ways. It's a uh, Camorda. Huh. Haven't heard of it. Yeah, yeah. It's a small. It's a small farming town. It's no big deal. It's it's whatever. Nothing shady there! <laughs> <laughs> nope, just really a wandering like traveler, just like the rest of y'all. Well, I mean, I was really impressed with the little trick. I sure would like to see a, a big trick. <gasps> I used thaumaturgy to open all the windows. <laughs> <laughs> Being about one o'clock in the morning at this time, and the energy of the tavern has kind of come to a quiet crawl. Those who are deep in their cups are either snoring or in the process of preparing to go to sleep. You watch as the uh, as Adeline, the, uh, the barmaid, is walking around cleaning up tables, and suddenly all the windows in the room slam open with a heavy impact, and there's a burst of wind that comes through. And you watch as the two crowns guard that were outside flanking the opening doorway suddenly rush and look in and look about at a lot of you. Sorry, drinking, drinking. I that have two extra. Weird. I did order two extra. Two extra? And they both just slowly curl back to their perimeter. You're no fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, circus. <laughs> Woo! Mm. Circus. Uh, it's a gesture I'm in a trick from. Caleb. Oh. You, you want to see a trick? I. I would love one. I am well into my second trust at mm -hmm. this point. I can show you a trick. Uh, young lady, if you would uh, assist me, please step up onto the table. Yes. Absolutely. Just don't break anything. <clears throat> Just your minds. 
and I begin to weave my hands in a, a slow one hand, a slow circle around the other, and a globe of golden light poofs out and floats out. I put my hands and feet out, sort of in a, uh, 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 just a akimbo sort of pose. <laughs> <laughs> and a second little globule of light. I feel it coming. Out. Hit me! <laughs> then two more at the same time boom, boom, come out of my hand. And then they amass upon my uh, little companion and form a similar sized little humanoid of light that then coincides with my little friend. And she is glowing golden on a table in the middle of the Nestle Nook. <laughs> <laughs> the goblite, ladies and gentlemen, the goblite. Thank you, thank you. That's incredible. And claps in the back rooms. You see him. Yeah. One of the drunken gentlemen has come to semi consciousness and goes, That is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and then passes back out on the table. How did you learn to do that? Uh, well, uh, that is, uh, that was. Uh, I mean, I, I could always do that a little bit as a kid. You know, I was always good uh, with magic. I had a, had a knack for it. That one's easy, that one's easy. It's impressive. Oh, thank you. <sighs> oh, buddy. Maybe he can oh, teach you buddy. how to do that. Yeah, is it something that can be taught to others? Are you trying to learn like, magic? Is that a thing? Wow. I'm just a little curious about oh. how people use their magic. You know? I, I've seen you have a few tricks up your sleeve. You seem like you're not totally magic inept. <clears throat> no. <laughs> it's relatively new for me, though, so I'm just uh, trying to learn. Are you reading a lot? No. I wonder if maybe I should be. Well, it could be helpful. Um, although, I mean, I'm a bit of an amateur teacher. I've been, I taught not the, uh, the one trick you saw, but uh, other things we've been working together. I suppose I could try to help you. Have you had these magic abilities your whole life like a kid? No, no, no. Again, fairly recently. Something happened? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, do you two not know each other super well? You seem like you do. Oh, uh, we got a good, you know, 24, 48 hours on the rest of you. Yeah, we're not yeah. super deep. Uh-huh. <laughs> nope. Oh, where, where did you come from then? Well, I came up from the town of Port de Mali. That's where we met. Yeah, <laughs> I met Jester a while back, and after I left town, coming up to the northeast, I. Ran across her. I'd seen her do some of her magic before, and that's what I'm trying to learn about. If you need any more, you know, displays, you just let me know, because... Well, I, we've seen Actually, that thing a couple times. That's good. Just can I like, request I put on a, whole a display? For everybody. I think I have a broken rib. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. So... It might be getting more purple. I mean, I can ask, but I think I'm kind of tapped. No. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'll sleep it off. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I can try. I'll sleep I'll it off. I'll put my hand out. Oh, God. And I'll try to cast the... Uh, cure wounds. Uh, I can yeah, sleep it off. I got shit. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. Well, it's past midnight. No. Oh, no, I got to sleep. No, you, you concentrate for a moment. Uh, make a medicine check. Okay. <laughs> oh. Natural 12. Uh, plus, <laughs> 17. 17. Uh, you focus on the bruised area, kind of exposed uh, out of her, uh, her uh, monk robes, and uh, you watch as the slight bruising suddenly turns like a sickly green. That good? In a very unhealthy way. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, that doesn't look huh. You know what? I think this might um this might be worse than just like a bruised rib. 
Can they poke at it? Does it like, um, does it seem like oh. infected? Does it hurt? You I'm not going to poke at it with my finger though. I'm going to poke at it with like a, do a I fork. Get, I'm don't poke at me with a fork. Nice. Yes. That's, that's don't better. Don't poke at me with a fork. Not at all either. Uh, well, right now yeah, she's I'm inspecting going, it. Right now, there's um, you take a you take a fork off the table and no, don't no, no. I'll use the no. blunt then. Don't be such a baby. <laughs> <laughs> she pushes and it kind of bruise hurts a bit. You watch as this kind of sickly pus like liquid begins to pour pus. out, like a, with with a thick viscosity <laughs> and and a lot of it. Oh. And you like you, you all of a sudden feel like you you oh, punctured a balloon that's beginning to erupt, and you feel. Awful, and then you blink a few times, and it's just a bruise. Oh, what? You hear this distant? Oh, motherfucker! He's such a dick. What? Who? What? What? What's going on? Uh, my bruise is in the shape of a dick. <laughs> what? That would be really cool. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going it. to make sure I'm going to push on it a bit more. Ah. I think it's okay. You're fine. All right. Mm, Molly I think I need some sleep, you guys. Mm. Uh, is Gustav, the person who runs your circus, is he uh, your friends? Is he? Are he's family. Close? He's family. We take care of each other. He's he's a good man. So what's your play tomorrow? <sighs> well, they have all my things. They have all my family. I'm going to figure out what is going on. Try and find out what's actually doing this. I assume since it's not us, it's going to happen again. But it's how inevitable. can because we can't yeah. leave this tavern? Yeah. Well, Hopefully no time soon. I were Caleb and I not instructed to not leave the tavern? We not we received no, you no you formal part instruction. Of that formal instruction, no. The rest of you were told not to leave the tavern until further notice. I'm sure if we sleep on it we'll think of something. You and I can leave in the morning the same way we got in. <clears throat> That's true. That's yeah. right. How'd you get in? I would show you now, but I'm out of spells. Yeah, the fork <laughs> trick wasn't very, <laughs> very yeah. fun, was it? No, I was making sure she wasn't a zombie. I thought she might be. Hmm. Well, that's fair. Yeah. She did get, uh, you know. She got clawed, right? A bit, yeah. All right. Hey, bitches, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Where exactly am I going to be sleeping, by the way? I mean,. I, I, I can sleep down here, but uh, it might be nice. Well, if you would like to share my room, you can. Excellent. Oh, you don't mind? And I'm going to pull the swords off finally and just sort of start, you know, getting comfortable out of the mm -hmm. performance clothes. <sighs> I'm in Jester's room still, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sleeping on the floor, my bedroll. As she starts to go to sleep, I want to draw in my sketchbook and tell the traveler all about the cool things that I saw for the day. <laughs> and I'm going to draw like the red-faced guard as I pretend that I was a zombie. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to draw Molly's horns all full of jewels and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to draw this stack of books. The monster attack? And I'm going to draw, oh, and I'm going to draw like a zombie, but like as an old man, and then like as he's biting, his dentures fall out, and he's got no teeth. <laughs> nice. All right. Fairly decent sketches, actually. Yeah. All right. And you eventually find yourself to sleep. The rest of you go to your respective rooms and find yourselves falling into a night's rest. As the evening comes to a close and the morning brings you to consciousness, you are rested, so you're healed up, your spells are restored. We can use the long rest feature of D and D Beyond. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. 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 Ah, so where's that button? And all my spells are back. There's a button for it. Whoa, nothing changed. <laughs> <laughs> I have no spells. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So ah, I lost ten hit points? What the fuck? I've done something terribly wrong. She and Beyond watching and they're going, fuck you, not. <laughs> We're going to stop this part here before it gets super long. Yeah, that was pretty cool, man. I like, uh, <laughs> I like Jester. I like how they're starting to kind of like, uh, find their characters and like kind of come together a bit. I'm really curious to see what they're going to do to get out of the, get out of the inn. I'm pretty sure that's going to be up to Not and Caleb. Mostly Not. 
if if not can just focus you know since they weren't given specific you know instructions to stay within the end only the other characters were i think it's going to be on them and then they'll probably be assisted by the others unless they can all just sneak out but i mean i doubt it it's more it's not like it's nighttime anymore if they were going to escape the perfect time would, would be like night but since the daytime is now uh you know a thing and the sun's out it, it's going to be damn near impossible i think the only ones who are going to be able to get that through would probably be not and uh and caleb like especially caleb with his like projection stuff maybe he could use the cat to distract the guards or not, you know what i mean something you know something like that if you enjoy this you know do all the good things um if there's anything you want to add anything that i missed anything i'm confused about any you know questions you want to answer please do so uh hopefully you guys enjoy this have a good morning afternoon or night stay safe uh and i'll see you guys uh in the next part Peace.